Welcome everyone. In this presentation, I will be going over Tesla's Q4 2023 income statement. This is for educational purposes only and um, I'm not providing any financial advice. As always, you should do your own due diligence so you make better and um, sound decisions in regards to your hard earned money. Uh, the numbers provided are as accurate to the best of my knowledge. If you see anything that may not be accurate or misstated in any way, please feel free to let me know. I actually encourage you to do so. Um, I do make mistakes at times, so I'm copy and pasting numbers from one uh, document to another, and there's also room for error. But in general, uh, this presentation is just to give you an idea of how to read and what to look for in a document, uh, more so than the actual numbers. But the actual numbers are important, so we wanna make sure they're accurate. Now, uh, let's start with the Tesla production and delivery numbers. Uh, this is the operational summary report produced by Tesla. It uh, basically shows the production and delivery numbers for Tesla products. Um, you're welcome to pause this presentation at any time and review these at more depth. So feel free to pause um, while I may be talking too fast or sometimes too slow or rambling on. The numbers I'm interested in here are the auto deliveries that I have highlighted. Um, give me a second, a uh, little pointer here. Um, so you can see the numbers here. In, these are the total deliveries, and I like looking at that number. And the next slide, I have a chart that will show you the progress, the growth of uh, Tesla on deliveries. This shows the production. So this is how many they produced, and this is how many they sold. They try to stay almost uh, equal. Um, and down here, you'll see the solar uh, deployed, uh, supercharger stations, etc. that's in here. Uh, my key numbers that I take a look at are the deliveries. So I'll show in my next slide uh, a chart showing how much Tesla has grown in the past five years. Here is the visual of um, a chart that I put together from the previous uh, slide, which shows the actual volumes and deliveries. Um, this is a volume since 2019, and as you can see, from 370 plus thousand deliveries a year. Um, they've now um, went from that volume to 1.8 million um, just the past uh, December 2023. Tesla has been growing approximately 50,000 on average year over year. Um, the Model 3 was released 2017. The Model Y was released 2019. And that's why you see this uh, spike in growth is because of those two new models. Now it usually takes a year after the release of a model to see a significant growth. Uh, as of now, January 2024, uh, Tesla is about to reach its peak production, um, meaning that right now, if you um, add up all the gigafactories and their capacity of uh, producing cars, it adds up to approximately 2.2, uh, 2.3 million cars. If uh, they don't grow as far as factories are concerned, then they only have another approximately four to 500,000 more cars to grow. So that means their growth rate is gonna kind of slow down, not because of demand, it could be demand, but also because they don't have the capacity to build more. And that's why it's so important uh, for them to start building uh, gigafactories. Um, the current issue though right now with Tesla is not just that, uh, the past year or so it's inflation. So the cost of the car hasn't increased. But unfortunately, most people who buy cars need to borrow money. And in order to borrow money, they pay a certain interest. And based on that interest, that's those are the monthly payments that they can afford. When the interest rates go up, that means their uh, monthly payment goes up. The car may not have gone up in price, but the cost of borrowing, meaning using uh, the bank's money to buy the car goes up. So kind of almost virtually the car is increasing value just through interest rates. So Elon has recognized this and in order to offset that, he believes that by reducing the price of the car would be best for now. And once the rates start decreasing, he can then stop reducing these prices or pause or even potentially uh, increasing them. Um, and that should uh, help in what uh, analysts look for are the um, operating margins. We'll talk about operating margins in a few slides down. 
Now we'll go to uh, the next slide. Um, this is another chart I put together, which I like. This chart uh, shows uh, how Tesla has been uh, reducing the cost per vehicle uh, lately and will continue to do so. This is important so that um, it will make them competitive or continue to be competitive and allow them to sell their cars cheaper and hopefully not at the expense of their um, expected margins. So, you know, in the previous slide where I was talking about how Elon's reducing the price to, uh, to, to the interest rates. Well, that's great, uh, but it's hurting margins. However, if we could reduce the price, the cost that is of producing the car, uh, we can reduce the price of the car and not affect the margins. So Elon has been reducing the price to combat inflation, but once interest rates drop and Tesla continues to be more efficient in the cost, uh, they can retain their prices, uh, like I mentioned, uh, or even reduce them without hurting margins. Um, so we can see here uh, in June 2022, the cost, the average cost of the car was 41000 while just a year, a little over a year later, it's been reduced down to 36. And my understanding is that they're getting more and more efficient. Uh, and with the next gen platform, uh, these numbers will drastically go down. Uh, this is the operating margin that uh, chart that I put together quarterly. Uh, this for me personally is my favorite chart that I look for. Um, so it's a key figure for analysts and the main reason why the stock has been tanking is because you've noticed since March of 2022 the margins have been dropping. The, the margins really represent how efficient a company is able to generate profit um, through its core operations. In a nutshell what, what you do is um, you take the operating uh, income after you've deducted all the expenses and you divide it by the full revenue. So when we look at in March, it was 19%. What basically that means is for every dollar it brings in as revenue, after it pays everything off, except for the income taxes, after it pays everything off, it makes 19 cents to the dollar. So that just gives you a range that says, oh, the operating margin for Tesla is 19%. You may want to go out there and now compare it to other uh, uh, auto dealer, um, auto companies and see relatively to them how good or bad they are. Um, so you will see that it had a peak uh, in March, but since March, it's been tanking. It's gone down to as low as 8%. So that's not really good. Now you need to ask yourself, why is that? And I've mentioned in previous slides, because of inflation, um, interest rates have gone up, the demand for the cars go down, Elon tries to combat that or offset that by bringing the prices down. Bringing the prices down means revenue goes down the costs are still there, so it impacts um, your margin. So now instead of making 19 cents to the dollar, uh, they're making 8 cents to the dollar. The good news is the previous quarter that was just released, which um, made the stock tank a lot, uh, there's the bright side here is that the operating margins kind of leveled off. So it was 7.55 the previous quarter, and this quarter went to 8. So is it a head fake? or not, is it bottoming, is leveling? We're not sure, we have to wait a few more quarters to see. I've mentioned the operating income, however, uh, which is the margins that um, are derived from in the next few slides, and I'll go over it in more depth uh, in the income statement. Okay, this is the uh, income statement that Tesla released last week uh, as part of their presentation deck uh, on the earnings uh, call. Um, so this is the Q4 2023. The income statement is usually for a period in time. And in this case, it's for the fourth quarter, so three months. And um, these numbers that are displayed on here uh, are in the in US dollars and in the millions. Uh, what that basically means is when you see that number, financial numbers, uh, obviously dollars, the 20,630 really represents 20 billion 630. So wherever you see these numbers that, that relate to dollars, uh, I would add six zeros at the end of it, right? Because it's in the millions. Uh, so the income statement is broken in, down uh, into sections of revenue. We have the cost of goods sold, cost of revenue. So um, what it costs uh, for the, related to the revenue uh, above. 
we have the gross profit, which is just a simple calculation of taking revenue and subtracting uh, the cost of goods sold revenue to give us the, that number there. The operating expenses, which number is there. The income from operations, this is the key um, number where I've been talking about in previous slides and where we get the operating margins from. And by the way, I'll, I'll go back and uh, in the next few slides you'll notice uh, I'll go through each section and provide more details. So this is just a quick high overview. Um, we have the various breakdown of income, so we can generate or not generate, derive the, the final net income uh, for the company, so we can uh, derive the earnings per share, which is at the bottom here. So this is what we call the top number, right? The number right there. You'll hear analysts in, on CNBC or wherever you're looking at when they're reporting, they say, oh, they beat top and bottom numbers. What they're really referring to is the top number is the revenue is at, at the top of the income statement. And the bottom number, which is really the net income, but we use the earnings per share. So that's the bottom number uh, of the income statement. So that's why a lot of times you see, you'll hear uh, Tesla met, beat, or missed expectations. The top number uh, they re um, uh, released was 25 billion and we expected 24 billion, so it was a beat. And the bottom number is $2.49 a share and we were expecting $2.30 and they beat it, or the other way around, and the stock goes up or down, depending on these two numbers. And as I've mentioned before in my previous post, future guidance is pretty much the most important uh, uh, details uh, of, um, of the stock itself to see where it's heading and trending. Um, next slides, I'll start uh, going through each section of the income statement in more detail number the revenue section of the income statement and um, we can see here it's broken down by automotive sales right the cars that they sell the energy generation and storage that they sell and the services so there's three sections here the automotive sales are basically the cars that we all are aware of right the model 3 SX whatever the sales that's about 20 billion plus there's regulatory, regulatory credits. These are federal credits that uh, the government will give Tesla, kind of rewarding them for, uh, for not producing any carbon emissions, while other companies that produce combustion engine gas cars, Legacy, they get uh, penalized, punished actually, if they produce cars that uh, release more than whatever that standard is. So in the case of Tesla, they benefited um, from this uh, approximately 433 million. These are, these are really, and I don't want to get to too much detail, you can look it up in, in Google or see. Um, they actually sell these credits to Ford, GM, who buy it from them. Uh, so it's funny because Tesla's generating 433 million of that. Um, as an investor long term, this number is no longer going to exist, right? Moving forward in time, there's not going to be credits and they're going to go away. So Tesla's not going to be relying on this. But right now they're benefiting by almost half a billion dollars. There's leasing. So when uh, you lease a car, um, they earn about $500 million uh, this quarter for a total of 21 plus billion in just autos. The energy generation, so some people are not aware, but uh, Tesla does produce, uh, generates energy and stores it. So they do sell um, solar panels and batteries that are stored uh, in either, it could be in a, another factory, which a company wants to use, solar energy or even uh, in homes people put solar panels on their homes anyway that uh, generated 1.4 billion this quarter and also their services right that uh, Tesla always says that uh, Tesla says sells sorry um, one is full self-driving right that's a service um, huge margins on that this quarter they uh, generated over two billion dollars so when we add all this together it's approximately just over $25 billion in revenue just for this quarter. And that's huge. This is just a, a pie chart that I put together um, just to represent what I just explained in the revenue. Just give you a, more of a visual pictorial version of um, what I just said earlier. You can see just by looking at this that uh, Tesla right now relies a lot on auto sales, right? A lot of people you know, say, Tesla is just a, 
auto company and a lot of Tesla, uh, Uber Bowl, fanboy, uh, Tesla people who love the company. Um, really, I'm trying to explain to everyone, it's not just an, an auto company itself. It's, it's a software, it's an AI, it's services. Just like I related to, to Apple, everyone keeps saying that Apple is just an iPhone company, but it's not, it has, it's more than that. Huge, uh, huge amount of money they, they get from their services. So uh, what I would like to see over time is this service and other, and energy obviously, but this service and other to keep growing because the margins on this are just extremely high. You see the margins on the automotive sales, on the operating, when we were looking earlier, were 8% and they've gone as high as 20. Um, services, and somewhere I recall, those numbers could be as high as 80%. So can you imagine for every dollar you make on services, um, you take home 80 cents to the dollar versus for every car you sell, uh, you, you'll take 10 to 20 cents uh, uh, to the dollar. So yeah, uh, over time, I'm expecting to see that number grow, especially with full self-driving. Moving on to the next uh, section of the income statement, we went to the revenue. Now we're going to the cost of goods sold. On the income statement, it shows us cost of revenue. Same idea. Um, this is basically the direct cost associated uh, with making the product. So um, let's just talk about, for instance, the automotive sales revenue that we saw earlier, around $20 billion. This is just basically telling us um, what was the cost of producing that car. And in this case, we're talking the direct cost. So for instance, the raw materials and the labor, right? Just let's just keep it simple. And let's just say basically how much we paid for the raw materials and the, the resources, either it was a human being or a robot, what was the cost? In this case, it was $17.2 billion. So, the overall cost when you take auto energy services uh, was just over $20 billion. Now moving on to the next part of the income statement, the gross profit and operating expenses. Um, now that we have the revenues and the cost of goods sold, the cost of revenues, we can now calculate the gross profit. It's just a simple calculation of taking the revenue and subtracting the cost of goods sold and when we do that you'll see on the income statement um, it comes out to it was around 20 plus 25 billion minus 20 plus billion uh, in cost of goods sold so that leaves us with 4.438 billion in gross profit so we'll just put that number aside for now uh, and we'll move on to the next part which is the the operating expenses um, these are basically the expenses that the company incurs to run the business right the cost of goods sold, we said earlier, was just the raw material and the labor. However, uh, Tesla needs to keep the lights running, they have to pay rent or uh, marketing inventory, et cetera, lots of stuff. In other words, in order to keep the, the company, the lights on, uh, we have to pay some other bills and that's what these bills are. And included in there, there's research and development and usually heavily in a tech company where they keep doing more research and development and in Tesla's case, they're working right now on a few things. One is the next gen platform, which is the next uh, generation of cars that they were producing and um, spending a lot of money on this dojo AI and the full self-driving. Uh, so that's part of the expense there. So that has to be taken off from um, the gross profit. And uh, they have other expenses here, which they refer to as selling general and administrative, which is uh, this number here, 1.2 billion for a total of 2.374 operating expenses. So we can calculate now uh, the key number that I'm excited for and I'm always looking for is the income from operations. And that's basically taking the gross profit here, right, that we derive from the revenue minus the cost of goods sold. But now we're gonna also subtract additional expenses, which we call operating expenses, of 2.374 to get my number, which I get excited for, is the operating income. And we'll look at that on the next slide. So the income from the operations is two billion and change, right? Two billion, 64 million, which is calculated using the previous slide numbers that we were looking at earlier. Just um, 
from mean income statement, which is the gross profit, I don't know if you remember in the previous slides, minus the operating expense to derive and get this income from operations. This is an important number. This is my favorite number uh, from the income statement. Well, one of the favorite numbers uh, where we use to um, uh, to get the what I call the operating margin. So you remember the previous chart where I was showing you the margins were declining, right? They went from 19% all the way down to 82%. And the main reason why the stock has been tanking is this is that number that we use, the operating income, and we divide that by the revenue to tell us what the margins are. So in other words, the revenue was around 25 billion. We take 2 billion divided by that to tell us how much uh, income do we make for every dollar uh, of revenue we receive, right? So we use the operating income. Um, I will show the next chart um, on, on the next slide, the same chart that we were looking at earlier so we can relate to this again. So just try to remember that number, 2 billion and the um, revenue of 25 billion. Um, in addition, uh, we're not done yet, so the income statement still has a few more line items to report. It's a few more income and um, expenses to deduct from the operating income to get to the net income. Uh, I'm gonna go through these, skim through these a little bit quickly so we can get to the next slide. Um, you can pause, look at this, you can Google and find more details on this. Um, so I'm gonna go through the interest income, which is 333 million. This is basically stuff like if they uh, lend money out to someone and they're collecting interest from that or, or they're putting money in the bank and collecting interest. This number here, the 61 million, um, it's a negative because there, this is an expense, right? This is could be from a, a debt or borrowed money from the bank and they're paying interest. And this is a, another, um, it could be income or expense, miscellaneous, which in this case, it's a negative, so that's an expense. So when we take these three numbers, we subtract that from the operating income and we get this income, which is referred to as income before we pay income taxes. So you take that number to 191, think of it like the way you would report your income taxes. Um, if you weren't uh, paying any income taxes through your company, meaning the company that your salary uh, comes from, uh, let's just say you're independent, at the end of the year you would declare your income, which you would say it's 2191, that's my taxable income. So that's what this number is. And then we calculate the taxes. Uh, this number is a one-time benefit to Tesla. So kind of let's ignore it for a quick second here, pretend it's not that's not the number. Um, what you would do is you would take the 2191, the two billion, multiply by its tax rate, and you would put that tax owing here, and you would subtract it to get the final net income. For this quarter, fortunately for, um, Tesla, it's a one-time provision. Think of this as um, they get a uh, kind of a benefit here. It's a 5.7 billion almost. Um, think of it almost like a refund, right? So here it's gonna show as a positive, right? So to two billion and we subtract the tax that they owe, but in this case, it's a negative. So that means two negatives will be a positive. We add those two numbers together and it shows as if Tesla has a $7.9 billion net income. But that's deceiving because they didn't really earn that income. This is through taxes. That's why that number is inflated uh, at 7.928. Um, when we calculate, when they do calculate the real, I'm going to call it the real earnings per share, they're not going to use this number. They're going to take away the benefit that they got because that's a one-time benefit that they didn't earn. And it would be approximately, and don't quote me exact number, it's around $2 billion. So the real number is really $2 billion. But for, for, for this presentation, we're gonna go with what they reported on here, and then later on we'll, just, we'll explain why uh, the EPS they show of, um, of two billion, right? Because that's the real number. This is a one-time increase which should not be reflected really in how much they earned. Hope I didn't confuse you here. So again, um, this is uh, the chart I showed earlier of the operating mar margins. Uh, this is a key figure for Alice again. Um, and again, repeating myself, the reason why the stock's been tanking. Uh, I show this again just to show you um, how we generated these numbers, right? This 8.2 is from the previous slide. We took the um, the income, uh, sorry, the income from operations and divided by the revenue. Um, that's it. 
Okay, this is the bottom part of the income statement, so we're coming to the end, and what we refer to as the, the bottom number. Um, so we generate, we drive, I guess, uh, the earnings per share. In order to calculate the earnings per share, there's a basic and diluted, uh, we need to know how many outstanding shares are out there. So if we look at the income statement, we see this net income of 7.928. And remember what I said, this is not the real, uh, it's not a real number in the sense that that's not really how much they generated because in there there's that 5.7 billion in, in an income tax benefit that they received that shouldn't, wasn't really part of their business, right? Uh, it's around 2 billion. But for this exercise, again, we're going to go with what was reported, 7.92 billion. And you see these numbers down here. There's what we call basic and diluted. Let's just deal with the basic for a second and I'll explain in a bit the diluted. The basic says that um, Tesla has 3.181 billion shares outstanding. So to keep it simple, there's 3.181 billion shares out in the market there that we trade with, right? So the company um, has issued 3.18 billion shares. In order to figure out the earnings per share, we take this net income, right, the 7.9 billion, and we divide it by the total number of shares that are out there to give us what that number 8 billion represents in a single share, right? That's basically all it is. So we take this number 7.928 divided by 3.181. That means Tesla is reporting $2.49 per share. The diluted, this one here, um, company tends to issue stock options, uh, benefits and all that for, for, for people to stay, like Elon or certain executives, they may tell them, you know what, you have stock options that you can exercise five years from now or whatever. These uh, shares really don't exist, right? Meaning they're kind of virtual at the time. But when those shares are up for, like they're expired or ready to expire, Elon will exercise his rights to uh, own those shares. So since those shares don't really exist, when Elon decides to exercise, let's say, he, I'll give an example, let's say he has a million shares, he will exercise them, the company will have to issue the additional shares to meet that. So that's why it's called diluted. What you're really doing is you're diluting the value of the stock by issuing more free shares out there, right? So that's why they call it diluted. So if everyone were to um, exercise their shares today, let's pretend that at some point in time, uh, today, tomorrow, whatever, everyone calls in their options, this is what the um, total outstanding shares would be 3.492. So they will also report that and say this is probably a real number right 2.27 not 2.49 hopefully i'm not again confusing you but take it for granted you can do some googling and look at the definition between basic and diluted basic is what really is issued as of this moment diluted is think of it um an unfunded liability that a government may have saying that or the cbp if everyone called in their chips or asked for their pension and they want to cash in today um, that would be the diluted, right? Um, but the basic is the ongoing uh, shares as of this moment in time. Okay, that's basically it. So let's look at the income statement again. Uh, just to wrap things up, we have the full income statement here for the quarter. Uh, give me a second, bring it up. Yep, so this is the quarter that we were just... Uh, reviewing right the one that just passed um, again we have it's in a, for a certain period three months it's in millions of dollars US dollars we have the top part which is the revenue of 25 billion the cost of revenue right the cost of goods sold was 20 billion right the, that was the raw material and labor mathematical calculation by subtracting the Revenue minus the cost of goods sold gives us $4 billion. We have additional expenses, what we refer to as operating expenses. So these are additional costs to run the business itself. Is approximately $2.3 billion. Again, another mathematical calculation, subtracting the gross profit minus the operation uh, expenses gives us the, that key number that I like, the operating uh, income, right? So 2 billion, approximately 2 billion. The margin that I was been referring to is taking that number 2 billion and dividing it by 
25 million, right, to give us the operating margin. We have a few more, um, I guess, income and um, expenses that we need to factor in before we're done. And we did discuss the interest income, the interest expense, and some miscellaneous expenses that gives us what uh, we discussed earlier, the income, right, before we pay taxes. We subtract the taxes. In this case, for this quarter, it was a benefit to uh, Tesla. It's a, it's a plus here. Uh, as you can see, I'm giving you an example. On the previous quarter, when we take the income before taxes, we calculate the tax. In this case, it's 167 billion, and that gives us the net income, right? This is a better representation. You can look at the previous quarters of their net income. This is an inflated number here, 7.9. That's not a real uh, income there, but because it got a benefit from taxes, that's why that number is inflated. Then we come up with the net income. That net income, right, we divide it by the total number of outstanding shares to get the earnings per share. Now, if you were to look at uh, what Tesla reported, Tesla reported, I think it was 70 cents per share, right? That was because they used the real net income, which was a little over $2 billion, right, to divide it by the, the outstanding shares that are out there to get to that $0.70. Cents. So it went from $0.58 cents to $0.70. Cents. And that, in a nutshell, um, is the income statement. Uh, I'll try to put some other presentation with some of my charts and explain um, indicators, values that I look at for long term um, and uh, where I see Tesla growing and how it will do that. Uh, that's why this is important to look at income statements is you want to look at the trend like from Q4 even further back uh, and see are they growing or are they, is it in decline check out the Toyota check out all these other auto companies out there at best they're maintaining the revenue and at worst they're declining in revenue and that's where you see which company you really want to invest in uh, and do they have a future anyway I hope this uh, uh, was helpful uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions. Uh, if you saw something there that I uh, made a mistake or wasn't clear or whatever, feel free uh, to post in the comment section. Thanks again, and uh, that's it for now. Thanks. Bye-bye.